Hello fellow brawlers, I'm Carl Simon. It is time to brawl and it is already time for another update. I honestly wasn't expecting one until later this month because of how last year's worked out. So this is actually really exciting. Now in this video, I'm going to be breaking down everything that I learned from scoring through every frame in Brawl Talk. And if you like this video and you want more like it, not only can you subscribe for future update content, but you can also use code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. But remember, it expires after seven days, so you gotta go back and keep using it like for the new lunar new year skins just saying let's get started with the newest brawler in brawl stars mr p mr p if you didn't get it already is a penguin and based off of the bell on his head and the suitcase on in his hand i think he's a bellhop of a hotel probably within like the robo city is what i'm thinking as far as like where he's from in the brawl universe also i'm thinking that mr p might be a distant cousin of crows i mean crows and penguins are both birds right I just checked, they come from different families, so it's sad. Brawl theory failed. Let's go ahead and talk about his stats. His health is the easiest to measure at 4060, and he has slightly more health than Colt, Dynamite, and Brock, and slightly less than Jesse, Penny, and Terra. It's certainly not a lot, but I think that it is very fair considering how long his range is, which is actually very interesting, and we'll talk about that later. Now, for Mr. P's attack, he can hit one target with 980 damage, and then it does a bounce into the air, and when it lands, it does splash damage. Now, in the video, there was not a single example of his attack dealing damage to multiple targets with splash damage, but Frank did say it did splash damage, so I feel like we can trust him. Regardless, if Mr. P gets two hits on the same target, we're talking about a total of 1,960 damage, and when you compare that to all other brawlers in the game, it is literally right in the middle of what brawlers can do with a single attack. So, you could certainly say that his damage is average at best, but that's actually not what makes him special. But regardless, for his reload speed, it's actually on the slightly faster side of things. I estimated a reload speed of about 2.05 seconds, which is almost identical to Dynamite's reload speed. Now it might actually be slightly different. I'm gonna be doing a Mr. P Olympics video where I break down all of his advanced mechanics as well as compare him to all of the brawlers in the game. So make sure you guys wait for that. But for reference, that reload speed is slightly faster than Jesse's and Penny and it's slightly slower than Poco's and Shelly's reload speed. Now, although Mr. P's damage is not nearly as impressive as like Piper's or B's, Mr. P has such a faster reload speed than other long range brawlers that I actually think that he has a really good advantage against these brawlers, at least in a specific way. So let's talk about his range. Here's a screenshot comparing Mr. P's range to Colt without using his range boosting star power. As you can see, it's about one third tile shorter than Colt's attack, which means that the first part of Mr. P's attack has a range of eight and two thirds tiles ish. Once again, I'll measure that out more accurately later on. Now let's say it actually hits a target at max range. According to my measurements, it will then bounce into the air for a little bit and then land one tile further than where the target was hit. And from what I can tell, it will deal damage within a one tile radius from where it lands. Add all that together for a total range of 10 and two thirds tiles, which is actually slightly longer than Piper's, B's, and even Brock's. However, as if that was not enough range, if Mr. P's attack does not hit a target, once it reaches max range, it will actually bounce even further. My estimates show that it will bounce actually two tiles further, which would actually mean that Mr. P's total range would come up to 11 and two thirds tiles long. That is almost as long as a tick can attack when aimed in the perfect position. And that means that Mr. P will have the second longest effective range in the game. I should note that there will be a one tile area where if it doesn't reach that brawler and then it bounces over over them then it will actually miss them which is kind of funny and interesting but still second longest range of the game that's pretty good now i should note that all you have to do to cut his damage in half is walk directly toward him because it will hit you it'll bounce over you and you just keep on walking right there so like mr p is definitely weak at close range or to brawlers trying to chase him down but the fact that he has a fast reload speed for his insane range means that he's going to have a very interesting role as a low damaging long range brawler also he's a thrower Sort of. Now in this quick clip, you can actually see Mr. P's attack actually jump over a wall with the bounce and then land on the other side of the wall. That means that Mr. P can actually attack behind walls. Now the big question that I have is what will happen if Mr. P shoots his attack directly at a wall before it reaches max distance? Will it bounce 
directly behind the wall after it hits it, or will it just stop? Now, there was not a clip of that happening in Brawl Talk, so we do not know, but I will let you know as soon as I can in a sneak peek when Supercell lets me show that to you. Either way, Mr. P is able to attack behind walls. It's just a matter of whether or not it has to happen like at max range or by hitting a target right next to the wall. The last thing I wanted to talk about before I talk about his super is his attack projectile. There are two things other than range that I consider when measuring a projectile and how he easy it's going to be for it to actually hit targets. First is the speed and second is the width of the projectile. Now based off of the footage it looks like his projectile is actually kind of on the fast side of things. It looks like it's not quite as fast as Piper's projectile but a little bit faster than Penny or Jesse's projectile. But what's really key here is the fact that it has a very wide attack for the range. It's wider than Piper's shot, it's wider than B's, even wider than Jesse's shot. However it's not quite as wide as like Carl's or Nita's or anything like that. But with that said, with the speed, the range, and the width of the attack all combined together, it is very easy to say that this he's going to be an easy brawler for you to actually hit targets with. It's not going to be hard for you to hit your shots, and he's probably going to be a pretty good long-range auto-aim brawler, which is going to be very interesting. Now let's talk about Mr. P's Super. We didn't get a clip of it in Brawl Talk, most likely because the developers are still finishing it up, but here's what we do know. His Super is an item that will spawn penguin drones that will then attack enemies with a ranged attack. Now, we do not know how many penguin drones will happen. We don't know what their range will be, and we don't know what that item is. There are two ways that I could see Supercell doing this. Either Mr. P will throw out a briefcase and a bunch of drones will spawn out of it, come flying out and chase down enemies, kind of like a tick head does, except for the fact that they fly. Or Mr. P will throw it down and it will start to construct drones, and they will then attack enemies as they spawn or until the drone builder is destroyed, kind of like a turret built by Jesse or Pam, or like spawners in Clash Royale. You guys know you love them. Both ideas sound very interesting, and I will be going over all the details that you will want to know in a future sneak peek. And of course, his star power, guys. There is no way to tell what Mr. P's star power is in this footage. I looked at every frame and did not see anything that stood out. There's a chance that his star power is a base stat change, like an increase to his range, or maybe a bounce even if it doesn't actually hit a target, kind of thing like that. But what's more likely is that it has something to do with his super. It could be anything, and since we don't know exactly how his turret works, it's kind of hard to speculate. Now, as for Mr. P's rarity, I think the only rarity it could not be is an epic, and also probably like trophy road because they literally showed the entire trophy road and he wasn't there now i know that it shows the epic colors on the background when he's like on the screen but they actually use that same color for max's background as well that's kind of been what they've been doing in brawl talk in addition there are five brawlers in the epic rarity and four in all the others aside from the trophy road supercell typically bases rarity off of how unique and complex the brawler's abilities are and mr p has a lot of unique abilities and so i think there's a very good chance that he's either going to be a mythic brawler or a legendary brawler once again, guys, make sure you subscribe for those sneak peeks on Mr. P's, you know, Olympics video because you're not going to want to miss it. Now let's talk about the Trophy Road. The Trophy Road is getting a boost. In the footage, they only showed the rewards from 8K and on, so I'm guessing that they are probably going to be the same below 8,000 trophies. Either way, I went and I calculated the difference between the old and new Trophy Road, so you guys don't have to. Players who have not passed 8,000 yet will be able to earn 800 more gold, 550 more power points, and the equivalent of 20 additional boxes. That's like two mega boxes on top of it. That is really really amazing. However, I did a little math to see how much progress players are missing out on if you've already passed the trophy road at 14.5 thousand trophies. Previously, from 8,000 trophies to the end of the trophy road, players would have been rewarded with the equivalent of about 75 boxes worth of progress. It's kind of like the sum of all the boxes, the gold, and the power points all combined. With the changes made to the trophy road, players who have not passed 8,000 trophies will earn the equivalent of about 145 boxes by the time they pass that 14.5 thousand trophy mark. This means that players who have not finished the trophy road will gain the equivalent of roughly 45 boxes or 4.5 mega boxes more than players who have already finished the trophy road. But in the great words of Frank, don't worry though, you'll be getting a mega box if you've already finished the trophy road. A mega box, wait. They're still missing 35 boxes! That's not right! I'm not sure if they like just didn't check the math or they decided giving us four and a half mega boxes was too much, 
But before you guys make a fuss over it, I'll make sure and give them the feedback so that, you know, that they should at least throw in another three mega boxes or something like that. But anyway, we'll see what happens. Now, one other thing that I'm sure is going to be controversial is that they are removing Lone Star and Takedown from the game. And this event slot is also going to be removed, which means that there will be one last star token to claim each day, which will slow down your progress by the equivalent of 30 tokens every day. Now, I'm planning on doing a video where I give my 100% honest feedback on the update, but I will tell you right now that I really do wish this Supercell would have tried more things to make these modes better before removing them from the game. That's all I'm going to say about that right now. Now let's talk about the new mode, Hot Zone. This is basically a capture the point game mode where your goal is to have control of a certain zone longer than the enemy team. My guess is that your team gains points for having control of a zone for a certain period of time. And if nobody is in the zone, it looks like this, meaning that neither team is gaining points for it. But then it will actually turn blue or red depending on which team as has a player in it. And if you look here, a Bit and Carl are actually on the red team and Bull is on the blue team and the point is gray, meaning that neither team will actually gain points even if one team has more brawlers in the zone than the other team. Now, one thing that I'm really excited about is the fact that you can actually have a different number of zones and different placements of the zones on various different maps, as you can see between these two that are shown in here, which will greatly impact the strategies and the comps that you're going to want to use. I really cannot wait to show you guys more gameplay from this mode. Now, let's talk about the Lunar New Year. We're getting a new arcade like environment which makes so much sense okay when i first saw max and 8-bit i was thinking of some type of like a futuristic environment and i was kind of right in a way i mean there is a bullet train but rather than it being like a futuristic like a space-like environment it's more like an asian futuristic in fact you'll actually notice a few details like pinball sushi a cult crunch billboard whatever this means, Orakshil, which is Korean for arcade, and Rico's Arcade Place or whatever. This definitely means that I'm going to have to adjust where I think a few of the brawlers call home, but I definitely think that it is safe to say that Rico, 8-Bit, and probably Max all belong in this new environment. Now let's talk about skins, and guys, don't forget Code Kairos. First off is Agent P, who looks like he's a super spy and is absolutely hilarious. We don't have a whole lot of stuff to go off of here, but based off of recent brawlers being released with basic skins, my guess is that it'll cost 30 gems. Now, Heroin BB has a super cool saber and attacks with an 8-bit style sword and effects. So cool. Based off of the limited footage I see, I've seen of her, I'm guessing that she's going to cost 150 gems. Now, Street Ninja Terra is a modern ninja who actually uses psychic powers so that she doesn't have to touch her cards in her hands anymore. They just float. Now, this paired with the fact that she's now covering her face with a hoodie that was already covered by a mask means that I can only think she's becoming more of a germaphobe. Mm. Maybe a little bit overboard here. But based off of what I've seen, I, I I think it could be another 150 gem skin as well. And of course, we have a virus 8-bit who walks on spider legs and shoots out green projectiles and looks super evil. This skin looks super cool. I could see it costing 150 gems, but I could also see Supercell putting this at 300 gems because of how cool it looks. And of course, we have Koala Nita. It's going to be a very special skin as all of the net proceeds from the skin for the first couple of months are actually going towards charities to help with the catastrophes that have been happening in Australia, which I think is really cool. You'll notice Bruce wearing a firefighter's jacket and helmet. Now, my guess is that this skin is going to cost 80 gems, but maybe even 30 gems. I don't know, based off of like Panda Nita? We'll see what happens. Now, there's also going to be a Valentine's Day skin for Piper, and we have no idea what it will look like, but, you know... Either way, you get the idea. Now, I believe Agent P and the Valentine's Piper skin will be permanently available for purchase, but I should mention that Frank and Ryan did say that these skins are paired with Lunar New Year, which tells me that Heroin BB, Street Ninja Terra, and Virus 8-Bit are likely going to be limited time only skins. And as a reminder, it's also very likely that Royal Agent Colt, Dumpling Daryl, and Leon Dance Brock, which are three of my favorite skins in the game, will likely be returning for a limited time only. And if the year old Brawl Day skins are any indicator, the year old Lunar New Year skins may even be sold at a discount. That's just a theory, a Brawl theory. Oh, that's not the right video, sorry. And that is Brawl Talk, guys. And I'm so excited to show you guys more footage from the game and give you guys some sneak peeks. So make sure you stay around for that. And also let me know in the comment section below what you are most excited for for this update. Personally, for me, it's the new mode and like the new brawler, obviously. But like, I don't know. Let me know, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. For now, this is Kyrostein ticking by and we will see you in Brawl Stars.